Welcome back, students. I have a, another Photoshop lesson for you today. Uh, there's a lot that I want you to learn about Photoshop, and I try to create like one project to do a lot of elements that I want you to learn. So this is a, a crazy project. It, it really doesn't really make any sense, but it gets to a lot of elements that I want you to do. Um, the first thing I want you to do in this uh, project is I want you to open the Red Rocks JPEG image. And that Red Rocks image JPEG is located in your landscapes folder. So go ahead and open that up and I'm gonna open that up. Now I've taught you a lot of different ways to uh, add a mask and select items. I'm gonna teach you another one that's really cool. And again, you have to figure out how to best select something, right? In this red rock JPEG image, I want to get rid of the sky and just have this. I could certainly do this with all of the other tools that I've shown you. So I wanna punch a hole in this. So right, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a mask. I'm gonna add a mask, okay? And then making sure that I've got the mask selected, the next icon over is this FX icon. And if I click on it, and I click on the blending options, um, there's a whole bunch of tools in here that we haven't been introduced to, but I think I'm gonna go over like drop shadows and um, strokes a little bit later. But it, on the blending options, I want you to pay attention to these, this slider box right here. Every pixel of every color in Photoshop has a luminosity value between zero and 255. So if I tell Photoshop that all pixels at a certain value, I want them to be transparent. So this is a gray, sli gray slider. So the, this is black and this is white. So if I pull this slider to the left, do you see how these pixels are becoming transparent? What's happening is Photoshop is analyzing the pixel luminosity and saying any pixel with a value of 185 or above, I'm making transparent. Okay, so if I do it and do it and do it, I'll make these image, I'll make these pixels transparent. Now, because the rock has a has some pixel values of white, this is not going to work, and I'm not going to even do a good selection. So I'm going to go ahead and reset that. But you can blend in gray, white value, or red, green, or blue. Well, I know that the background, the sky has blue. And I also know that the rock formation probably doesn't have much blue, maybe a little bit of reflection on these light pixels here. But look what happens if I use blue. If I pull this slider down and the pixels will start being transparent, and I could probably pull this down probably into the 140s. I'm gonna pull it f too far. Do you see how those Pixels on the mountain are becoming transparent. Well, we don't want that. We don't want those pixels to be transparent. We just want the pixels around there. I'm gonna go, let's see, about 164. All of the pixels blue with a luminosity value of 164 or higher, Photoshop is making transparent. Uh, don't worry about this garbage and don't worry about this garbage. We'll get rid of that in a little bit. And now we've got a really good selection on the formation. And look, it even maintained those uh, trees at the top. And if I want to get rid of all of this, I'm going to go ahead and hit the brush tool. And what am I going to paint with? I'm going to paint with black. I'm going to paint with black. And I can make my brush big with my bracket keys, make it big, and just get rid of all of that so that all of those pixels are transparent. All of those pixels are transparent, all of that, okay? Uh, and then I wanna go over here, 
and uh, I'm going to get rid of this. You'll see later I'm get get rid of it. So I'm not really too worried about this. But for now, because I just want you to have a good image with lots of transparent pixels, go ahead and paint out. Paint out with black. Paint out with black on your mask those pixels. Now I want you to save this twice. I want you to save this as a PSD file. You always should save things as a PSD file in case you want to go back and mess with them or change them. So I'm going to do file, save as, make sure it's a Photoshop file. I'm also going to save it as a PNG file. So when you save something as a PNG file, it maintains, it, it will save the transparent pixels in the image. So now I've got it both saved as a PNG and also as a Photoshop file. And I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to open up this lava field JPEG. And that rock formation, I want to put right here on this little piece of grass. So I'm going to go File, Place Embedded. I'm going to navigate to that red rock PNG file, the red rock PNG file, because it saves all my transparencies. And I'm going to hit Place. And the bounding box, the transform tool, will automatically be selected. So now I can just place it right on my little piece of green grass. And then I hit OK. And then I'm going to add a mask to the red rock JPEG. And I'm going to add the mask down here on the layers panel to go to my brush tool and I'm going to paint with black. I'm going to paint with black. I'm going to basically, I want to bring back the pixels of the grass so it looks like this red rock is actually here. And then I said I didn't really care about this because I want it, look, I want it to look like this is actually here. So I'm going to just get rid of all of those pixels and bring back the grass so it looks like our formation is actually here and then i'm also going to i'm also going to get rid of this this doesn't look like it just looks weird and i'm just going to get rid of this part and then i'm going to get rid of that part and make it a little more maybe make a little more grass so it looks more natural yes so now my really big red rock formation is on this really small piece of grass. I think that's cool. And it's kind of like a forced perspective thing and it makes it look like it's really there. Okay. <clears throat> uh, I want you to name all of your layers in this project because this is a little complicated. So the background layer I'm going to name um, lava field, lava field so that I have that background layer. And then my red rock I'm going to name little red rock just so I can understand that that's a little red rock. So now I want to teach you photo merge. So I want you to go file, automate, file, automate, and photo merge. And you're going to get the photo merge dialog box. And we're going to pull in some files. So hit browse, hit browse, and navigate to the photo merge folder and the panel images. So select panel image one, two, seven, and bring those in and then hit open. And what Photoshop is going to do is it's going to analyze these images and it's going to put them together based on pixel similarities. So, you know, nowadays, like you do a pano with your iPhone and you hold it and you move uh, an image and you create a pano. Well, Sometimes, you know, when you do a panel, like people are weird or something. Well, if you do this with a regular camera and take a picture and then move forward and take a picture, then you can have these pictures that you've taken on a camera merged into one image. So I'm just going to use auto for the layout and let Photoshop do all of the work and hit OK. Photoshop's going to look at all of the images and it's going to build them and it'll put masks on them in case you want to make any alterations. But for this project, 
Photoshop does a really good job of analyzing these images and seamlessly creating a good pano. There's a little bit of tearing right here and a little bit of tearing. For this project, don't worry about it, but you can go in and you can make changes for that. So now after Photoshop does its photo merge and creates this really good pano of our town, I want to crop it. I want to get rid of all of the stuff that's, you know, you know, pixels that aren't important. So I'm going to hit my crop tool, which is my C tool. My crop tool is the C tool, or it's the one, two, three, four, fifth tool down and make sure it's the first tool, not perspective, not slice, just regular old crop like so. And I'm just going to grab the side so that only the image that has pixels, none of those transparent pixels that didn't make the image. And I'll just do the end of the building like that, bring it down a little bit more, like so. And maybe, maybe I don't want that. I don't know if I want that bike there. Maybe I don't want the bike there. Maybe like that. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger right here. Yeah. So that's my image, and then I hit OK, and that's my crop. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to make all of this one image. All of these layers in this image are already selected. I can go to this drop down menu and I can say flatten image. So basically, it will take up all the images and flatten them. I'm going to hit Command Z or I can convert it to a smart object. Now, if I convert it to a smart object, everything that's just been edited is retained. And so if I double click into this, I can go back and re-edit it. So I like to do things as smart objects just in case I want to go back and re-edit it. So I'm going to do this as a smart object. If you did open it up, all you have to do is close it. And now there's smart object and I'm going to change this. I'm going to change the image called calling it. So I'm going to call this image town square. S town square. Okay. And then make sure I'm on the move tool. Make sure I'm the move tool. I'm going to select this image. Just grab it, drag it to my lava field, that original image that we're dealing with and bring it into my lava field. I want this image to replace the sky. So I'm just going to put it right here and, uh, I'm going to turn off the visibility eye on the town square and I'm going to go to the lava field image and I want to do a mask because I want to get rid of the sky. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if my uh, quick selection tool can do this for me. You know what? Look at that. Quick selection tool did a great job and I'm not worried about border being harsh because uh, I'm going to blend those other two images. So I'm going to go ahead and hit add a mask. Obviously, I've selected it backwards. So inverse, inverse the mask. Make sure you're on the mask. Hit command I, command I to inverse. And now we have our lava, but we don't have our sky. And then I'm going to bring back our town. <clears throat> but I want these two images to merge more. So I just want to make this kind of just blend. And for this exercise, I just want to blend this so that the lava and the cobblestone kind of blend together. Uh, if you want to, I'm going to go back to the move tool and figure out, let's see where I want to do this. So I want to make sure that I have enough to blend it like that. Uh, and maybe my image, I want to make more of the building. So I want to make it smaller like so, like that. <clears throat> so I hit the transform tool to make this town square image where I want it and then hit go. And then I'm going to add a mask to the town square image. Again, add a mask down here in the layers dialog box. And I'm just going to paint. I'm just going to paint with black so that the lava and the cobblestone merge. And I'm going to make my brush a, a lot bigger and then just kind of paint like that. So I just want those images to blend together. So we want our rock formation on the top layer. So I want to move this rock formation. So I want to move the rock formation above 
the town square, above the town square. So now the rock formation is in this image, but it's also in this image. We've got our photo merged town square, and then we've got a little blend with the lava, and we've got our rock formation. So it's kind of a weird forced perspective. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to go to your people folder and select the quick select JPEG. It's a guy who's like jumping and the photo's taken like him mid jump. So I want this photo to like have him jump from one image to another. So it's kind of like this weird, he's jumping in time thing. So I want him to have to be on both images like that. I'm going to show you another selection tool and this is called the object selection tool. This is the quick object tool and sometimes this tool really works. So what Photoshop is going to do is it's going to analyze the pixels that you selected. So I'm selecting this guy, right? And when I let go, Photoshop's going to analyze the pixels and go, well, based on what I think you want, this is what you want to select. And it did. It selected the guy. I don't have to do my magic wand. I don't have to do all of any of my lasso tools. It's got a good selection. Select and mask. Now, what we do have is a little bit of a halo on him, a little bit of a halo on him. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select decontaminate image. Did a good job, but I still want to shift the edge a little bit. So I'm gonna make it shift the edge about, let's see. So I'm shifting the edge 9%. So basically I'm shrinking the selection by 9% over the edges. And I'm gonna do a little bit of feathering, just a little bit of feathering, not much. Look at that, just like two pixels, barely even 1.4 pixels, and it's really making the edge better. And then I hit OK, and there's my image. Wow, that that's great. Here's my original image, and I'm going to turn off the visibility eye, and I'm going to rename this because I want you to rename everything. Just I'm going to say jump guy, jump, jump guy, or origin, original, and then I'm gonna label this one jump guy cut, cut out. I want this guy to jump out, but I wanna, I wanna make him like not there and then a little bit there and then all the way there. So now I'm gonna use the blending modes and th this is kinda cool. And so I'm gonna, first of all, I'm going to command J my jump guy Okay, and then I'm gonna Command J him again. So I want three images. So I'm gonna turn off the visibility eye and then for the second one, I'm gonna move him, make sure I'm on the move tool and I'm just gonna hit my right arrow and I'm gonna slide him to the right and then a little up, a little up and to the right. Okay, this is jump guy light and one and then I'm gonna go to the next layer and the same thing, I'm going to move him up a little bit and to the right. So I've got this, the guy three times. And I'm going to label this jump guy lighten, lighten two. So I'm going to put jump guy lighten one and two below the original cutout. So I'm just going to rearrange my layers by just dragging and dropping like that. Okay, I'm going to turn off the visibility eye on the jump guy cutout and the jump guy lighten one, and I'm just going to show you jump guy lighten two. And we, earlier we talked about the blend modes, and the blend modes are a thing that I just want you to play with. But right now, I want you to understand the three blend modes that you must know. So I'm going to pause this for a second and go to the blend modes that you must know tutorial. I'm going to interrupt that lesson just for a moment because I want you to understand the power of the blend modes. So I have this document and I have some blue here and then I have three squares, one of them black, one of them gray, and one of them white. I want you to notice what happens to these pixels inside of these three squares based on the blend mode that I select. Okay, so overlay is the first blend mode that I want you to understand. 
overlay ignores gray and makes things lighter or darker, increasing contrast. If I switch my three boxes and I select the overlay blend mode, what's happened? What has happened? Well, the gray box is gone, so the overlay ignores gray pixels. What did it do with my black box? It made it like a light blue. It makes things lighter or darker, increasing the contrast. So it made my black pixels lighter. It made them blue and it made my white pixels kind of a, like of a off color white. So this is normal. So it ignores gray pixels. That's the point I want you to understand. Multiply is the next blend mode that I want you to understand. Multiply ignores white pixels and makes things darker. So if I switch this to the multiply, look at that. It ignores white pixels. It ignores white pixels. The next one I want you to understand is screen. Screen ignores black and makes things lighter. Here's normal. We see the black and the gray and the white squares. If I select screen, what happens? It ignores black pixels and makes things lighter. So when we go back to the project, I'm gonna use lighten instead of screen. And so here's lighten. Uh, it ignores black pixels, right? But it leaves the white ones. But it, you know, it ignores those gray pixels as well. So these are the three that you must know. Screen, ignore, and overlay. Screen ignores black, makes things lighter. Multiply ignores white, makes things darker. And overlay ignores gray and makes things lighter. Do you see these are broken up into sections? So there's like the ignore white. These are all of the ignore white blend modes. Darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, darker color. Those are all of the ignore white blend modes. These are all of the ignore black color modes. Do you see how basically lighten screen, color dodge, linear dodge and lighter colors ignores black, but they do a little bit more to every, okay? And then these are the ignore gray blend modes. So depending on what pixels you want Photoshop to manipulate, these are the blend modes. I want you to play with all of these, but understand that screen, multiply, and ignore are the basic blend modes that you must understand moving forward. All right, so those are the blend modes, okay? And that was just a little bit of an explainer on how the blend modes work. So if I go to the darkened blend mode, look what happens. Those, those pixels come out, but the other pixels are a little more transparent. And if I go to the light and blend mode, what happens? The light and pixels are there. And if I go to the overlay, those pixels are there. Well, let's just choose light. And. He's barely there, right? Let's just choose right because I know the light and pixels. And then let's go to this image and do the same thing. Do the light and pixels and he's barely there. And then we go to the next image and he's there. But I don't really see him as much as I wanted to. So I think I'm gonna put a drop shadow on him to make him stand out more. <clears throat> At the bottom of my channels box, again, this FX icon, I want you to go to drop shadow, drop shadow, right there, okay? And I'm gonna put a little bit of drop shadow on him, okay? So I'm just gonna make it, I'm gonna bring these back to zero. All right, I'm gonna have it, a little bit of a distance, not too much, maybe like 10 pixels and have the spread about 15, 20% and then have it the size and then have the size about, oh, about 59. And I'm just kind of ballparking. I just kind of create a drop shadow. Okay, now I, I want this drop shadow on all of the other images of him. So if I hold my option key and I drag and drop, I can put the shadow on light and one, and I hold and I drag and drop and I put the shadow on guy two. Oh, now look at that. So now let's go back to this first image. On that image, if I have the drop shadow, look at that on, with the light mode. And then here's this image with the light mode. And then here's this image. 
Isn't that cool? It kind of it makes it like he's appearing out of nowhere and he's like three of them. That's just one place to use blend modes. And I just want to give you an, uh, an experiment to utilize the blend modes. And I thought, well, that's, that's great. All right, so that's cool and it's, it's a great little exercise. Let's do something crazy. The first thing I want to do is I want to merge all of these layers into one layer, but I still want to make it editable. I never want to make a layer not editable, okay? So I want to make sure that I select all of the layers, all of the layers, even the Jump Guy original because I have the visibility eye off, and I want you to go to the drop-down menu, and I want you to do Convert to Smart Object. I'm gonna call this Crazy Master. And then I'm gonna duplicate this layer, Command-J. I'm gonna label this one Crazy Master Clip Mask. Clip Mask, Clip Mask. And you're gonna see what that is later. And I'm gonna turn off that visibility eye just for now. I'm gonna go back to that first layer, the Crazy layer, and I'm gonna turn on the Type tool. I'm gonna turn on the Type tool and I just want you to type the word crazy, C-R-A-Z-Y. Just leave it black, okay? But I want you to, and then you can hit the check mark if you want, Command T, the transform tool. And I want you to, and I want you to hold the shift key. So I want you to do something that you wouldn't really normally do. I want to stretch these letters. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And I want you to stretch these letters, holding the shift key, holding the shift key and the transform tool make the word crazy encompass the whole document like this. The crazy text is between the crazy master and the crazy clipping mask. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to do a stroke. What a stroke is, it creates an outline on your text. So go to the FX dialog box and go to stroke and just do like a four pixel stroke. White is fine, it doesn't, just white is fine. You can do another color if you want to, if you want to do like yellow or red, but I'm just gonna do white, pure white, okay? And then hit okay. And you have the stroke on, on your crazy text. Now what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna put the crazy image inside that text. So I wanna go to my little box and I want to do create a clipping mask, create a clipping mask, okay? So the pixels from the crazy master clip mask are in the text. So I'll turn off the crazy master, I'll turn off the crazy master and you can see the pixels are there. I'm gonna zoom in, I don't know why, I don't know why it was small. So do you see it? Do you see the crazy pixels are there? That's cool, so you can create anything you, I mean, any image you can do a clipping mask and put them inside the text. So this might be a little bit confusing, but I wanna try and explain it as best I can. So I'm gonna turn off the crazy master layer so, the, so you can understand that I only wanna affect all of the pixels inside the crazy text. I'm gonna turn on the hue saturation layer. And um, the hue saturation layer allows you to change the hue of images. Anytime that you um, mess with any of the adjustment layers, the first thing I want you to do, the first thing I want you to do is go through the defaults. And if I hit like cyanotype, it'll have uh, like a blue hue. And if I hit uh, increase saturation more, it increases the saturation more. If I hit uh, increase saturation, if I hit uh, old style, it creates like an old style. If I do sepia, it's like kind of the old west. Uh, and if I do strong saturation, there's a strong saturation. And if I do a yellow boost, it'll boost the yellows. So um, I'm gonna do cyanotype just because it's kind of a unified, color, but I only want this hue adjustment layer. So remember when we did the clipping mask from the crazy master clip mask so that only the texts are being affected? I wanna do the same thing with this layer, so I wanna make sure this has a clipping mask. So I go again to create a clipping mask, and only this layer is being affected. So when I bring back my crazy master, 
the original layer has not affected. Only the letters. Crazy. Okay. So if I release the clipping mask, everything is being affected by my hue saturation. But I go to create clipping mask, only those letters. Okay. So, <clears throat> all right. So, so that's our crazy assignment that I want you to do going over two more ways to um, create a mask. Um, also introducing you to photo merge. I think that is something very handy. Uh, also introducing you to the blend modes. That's something that I want you to experiment with. And I want you to experiment with this in uh, any of your projects. Crazy. Good luck.